You know, spring is coming. Now, you may not realize that living in the Northeast, you know, with the nor'easter that you just had, you know, three feet of snow and deep buried in and, you know, kind of like digging your way out and just barely getting electricity back on. And guess what? You got another storm coming. But spring is coming. And it will arrive. We know this. We're so confident of it, so positive about it, that I can tell you with all the faith that I have, spring's coming. Yep, it's coming. Matter of fact, for some of us, it's already started. You know, this is my little kind of containers, you know, and I, I have my little snap peas growing, you know, and they're kind of like growing up, and this whole contraption, you know, is kind of strange looking, I'm sure, to you. You know, you may think, ooh, that's weird. Why didn't you just buy a greenhouse? Well, didn't have the money, <laughs> so I made one. But this little thing, you know, vines growing up the little green, you know, stretchy things that you can't see, they're going to bear peas because spring is coming and these plants are growing and they're not waiting to be made ready at the last minute for spring. As a matter of fact, they just go ahead and grow as soon as they get enough light, enough sunlight, and they just are prepared for spring. You know. Jesus is coming. A lot of people like to say, oh, sure, we've heard that before. And every year you say the same thing. Well, sort of. I tell people Jesus is coming, but I usually tell them, no, not this year. But you see, now that we're into 2013, I'm kind of warning people, hey, you know what? Guess what? Jesus is coming. And it could be this year. I don't think so probably 2014 or 15 is the best time. 15 being on till 17 is probably the worst time if you're really terrified of the end of the world to watch out because that's probably the best time for Jesus' return But as far as the rapture is concerned. But let me tell you something straight. These plants know spring is coming. Matter of fact, they're growing and developing so that I can have snap peas you know, in spring. And then I'm going to grow another harvest. And I'm going to harvest them over and over again. Because I'm going to keep growing them. Because I like snap peas. The same thing is true about what Jesus said when he warned his disciples. To tell those followers about the signs of his coming. You would know what it was like when Jesus was coming back. Because everything would begin to come together again. And this spring, things are going to seem like they're coming together. You know, pretty close. You know, there's a lot of things that have happened. Obviously, Israel became a nation. That's the biggest one. That's the most important one to know that we're in the last generation. So because that's the gigantic one, you need to watch for some of the smaller ones. You know, some of the other things that happen. You know, wars and rumors of wars. Oh, well, those are easy. They happen every year, don't they? Those are the things that I kind of like to say are kind of like spring coming. But being prepared for spring is more about getting ready to meet Jesus. Are you ready to meet your Lord? Are you ready to discover that God wanted you to prepare yourself to meet him? Did you know that Jesus said that there were five wise virgins who got ready, who prepared themselves? They, ten of them went out to meet him, but only five of them were prepared to meet him. They knew he was coming. Oh, everybody knew he was coming. All ten of them were excited about it. But you see, five of them said, well, we don't know if he's going to come today or maybe in a week. You know, it could be any time of this feast. And that could be at the beginning of the feast, in the middle of the feast, or at the end of the feast. It could be in the morning, or it could be noon, or it could be at midnight. Interesting how midnight, that word, comes into play. But he said, you know, we do know that when the shout is given, behold, the bridegroom cometh, we need to be ready. We need to have our oil ready and our lamps lit, you know, and our wicks trimmed and run out to meet him. Because after all, that's what we're prepared for, to go out, to go out, to meet him when he calls. Interesting how God gives us all these signs to prepare ourselves. I don't plant these things in the midst of winter. Oh yeah, it may be winter for you, but you see, here where I'm at, it's kind of warm. It's kind of getting 
closer to spring. It's getting towards summer and I'm kind of getting myself ready for spring because by the time spring hits, there's no time left. And that's kind of what maybe if you're in the dead of winter and you're stuck in a snowbank, you know, and you're thinking, yeah, spring's coming, sure it is. Maybe you need to think about Jesus coming because maybe the same thing's happening to you that happens every year. The last minute you get ready. At the last minute you prepared for winter and now you're stuck in a snowbank because, you know, after all, you didn't expect this new storm to be coming upon the old storm because last year wasn't that bad a storm. And yet this year you got dumped on. Were you prepared? Are you prepared for when Jesus returns? Because, you see, if you're waiting to get your life together and get your act together and you're just kind of hoping that it won't happen this year because somebody like me said, well, it probably won't happen. Ask those people that tell you that it probably won't happen if they're ready to go. <laughs> Baby, I'm out of here. <laughs> I'll tell you, I got my backpack packed. You know, I'm ready to split. But as far as Jesus returns concerned, of course, every day we look forward to his return. But we know that it's getting sooner and closer. Even recently, you know, there's been talk that the Pope of all people, abdicated. He stepped down from his position of authority. We do know that the European economic community is going on. You know, Some of the things that people were looking forward to, like this giant economic collapse, isn't happening. This Psalm 83 war isn't happening. You know, They had all these weird ideas like this contraption that I have that kind of functions and it kind of helps the plants growing, but you know, really the plants are going to grow anyways. It just protects them from the weather. Some of these ideas that people had, like Psalm 83 war or the quote unquote economic collapse, you know, if you're looking for those things as opposed to the Word of God to come true, you're going to get to see. If you think that somehow you're looking for some Imam of the 12th, 12th version of some new book that came out by some popular author. Because you think, ooh, it's got to be after 9-11 a certain way and happen the way you think. I got news for you. You might be looking in the wrong direction. Kind of like you're looking at a snowbank right now and not realizing spring is coming. Because if you're not prepared for spring, believe me, you'll still be stuck in winter in the middle of summer. You'll be cleaning up the mess, guaranteed. But you see, in order for me to get these plants... You see them, they're pretty tall. You know, they're growing up, oh, I don't know. They're about, I guess, a foot and a half. I had to take one of these things. And I had to take a little container, and I had to put some dirt in it, and I had to kind of look out at the sky and see if it was sunny, you know, and see the weather reports and see if it was going to be cold. And I had to kind of construct a little shelter for it. And I had to plant some seed and watch the little baby ones grow. Then once they were ready, I had to move them into another container. I had to have them prepared for the moment when they would be able to survive on their own. Now that they can survive on their own, all I have to do is kind of cover them up from the major weather storms, you know, that may come along and freeze them and chill them, just like I have to do in spring anyways. So they're already going and growing because they're going to be the early harvest. Now, I'll admit, come spring, there's going to be a harvest. By that time, I'll already have eaten some of my snap peas, you know, because they'll already have grown up and developed some fruit. And I'll have a chance to eat them before they even hit spring. God wants you to enjoy fellowship with Him. He wants you to be prepared for His rapture because He wants to spare you the late harvest. He doesn't want you to be harvested in the middle of summer when the heat's on. You know, and all the pressure's there and everything's dried up and getting bad, you know, and it feels like hell on earth. He doesn't want you to be at the end of summer where it's kind of like, you know, looking like, you know, it's the end of the world and nothing's going to go right. You know, you're kind of like post-trib, mid-trib, you know, dealing with all that kind of garbage, you know, and being around to see and die for your faith. He really wants you to be like these little plants here, kind of like pre-trib in a way, you know, kind of like early harvest. He wants you to be harvested early with the first gleanings of the crop. That even now in Israel, they even talk about the first harvest. And you need to prepare yourself of where you're going to be. 
Are you going to be like these guys here, kind of growing up as shoots, early harvest, for the Lord to come along and see your life and say, yes, well done, you have perfected yourself. It's just like Enoch, when he walked with me daily, I took him, I raptured him, before there even was a rapture. I surprised everybody. I just decided, you know what, Enoch, come on up. And so I took him home. You don't need to wait for the signs of the times to tell you to get your relationship together with God. You need to have a relationship together with God that's getting closer and tighter and more intimate like Enoch was. You need to be like these guys growing up into what God would have you to be, fulfilling your purpose and destiny so that you could say with Paul, I have won the race. I have finished my course. There is now laid up for me a crown of righteousness that I shall attain to. Or are you going to find yourself still wanting to go to Bible school, to get yourself ready, to be prepared, you know, to kind of get it together so that by the time you're ready, God has gone by. Jesus warned the city of Jerusalem. He said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that stoneth the prophets, you who have killed those whom I have sent in God's name, how I would have gathered you together like chicks under a hen, but you would not. You shall not see me again until you learn to say, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. But if you had known the hour of your visitation, if you had known that I was coming, if you had known that I had arrived, oh, I would have embraced you. I don't know about you. That scares me. I want to know the hour of my visitation. I want to be harvested in the early harvest. I want to recognize that spring is coming. I want to know that Jesus is on his way. I want to be prepared that though it may not be in 2013, I want to be ready every day. For no man knows the day or the hour, but we certainly know the weeks. And we do know the week, by the way. Approximate 12 day period. We do know the festivity or the festival or the holy day, the Jewish feast day that God will return. We do know within that certain time period, just like Paul said, we should know. There's no need to write you these things, but we know that the day of the Lord is at hand. But do you know? Are you aware of that? Are you knowledgeable and have you prepared yourself with being made ready, as well as preparing yourself to leave when it's time to go? Or are you so wrapped up in the world that you're entangled in the world and that to get free, you have to settle your accounts. You know, you have to get your retirement cashed out. You have to go divest yourself of all your possessions first. You have to go bury your dead. You know, it's interesting because Jesus said something about all those things I just mentioned. And you won't like the answer because he said, let the dead bury the dead. He said, don't possess yourself of your possessions but dispossess yourself of every other thing and then come and follow me. You see, the beginning of the Jesus movement, we knew what it was all about. But at the end of the Jesus movement, do we really know anymore what it means to take up our cross and follow him? I wonder, I wonder, when the time comes and we wake up the morning after, who will be taken and who will be left? Because I have no doubt that those who are and have been faithful to the Lord will survive through the great tribulation period. No problem. They will die for their faith and they will witness Jesus because they'll just figure, oops, okay, I blew it, forgive me, and move on. And they'll go on with God and die and suffer as we know the early church did. And God will bless them for it. But you know, that old Enoch, he kind of bugs me. You know, that little sucker, somehow he got through this life, enjoyed this life, and went out of this life without dying. That bugs me, because you know, that seems like kind of a better way to go than maybe the way you were planning on dying, than maybe the way you were planning on living. Because I know that for Enoch to have been taken by God, he must have found favor in God's eyes. And we know Jesus did. And we know Enoch did. And we know Elisha would fly out on a chariot. So, 
I don't know about you, but I think I'd rather learn something from these snap peas. Spring is coming. You know what? Jesus is too.